Today's Saturday. It's the first day that I'm not sick. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze though. <coughs> anyway, I've got some tea stuff. I've got some books. I've got my computer and some typed stuff, handwritten stuff. Man in the Holocene. I wanna do like a week in the life vlog because I've been inspired by some other artists' vlogs. So reading, writing stuff by hand, and then I've got all this stuff to start to put together. So this week, I'll just try and do my best and make a little vlog. Today, Monday, shave my face. I really want to focus on writing forward. What does that mean? There's a couple like scenes that I can begin to write into. Also, I've had to wrap towels around my face. Hold on. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Not the best. Oh, got a couple books in the mail. Oh, cool. This is from Jan Leonki, most fetid and most banned author. Can't remember how I heard about him, but I read something. You know, sometimes you read just an excerpt that strikes you, and I read from Jan. Yeah, cool. I don't have anything to say. I gotta read it. But it's two novellas, and it's interesting to me. So, there's that. Next book. Oh, dope, cool. This is the Questions of King Melinda. So the main body of the text is an account of the purported discussion between Melinda in the 2nd or 1st century BC and Nagasena, who provides answers to the king's questions about the teaching of the Buddha. There was a book I have by Mark Sideritz. It's like Buddhism as Philosophy, and it's kind of a survey of like the wide range of the philosophical treatises of Buddhism. And uh, it's just a really cool dialogue between Melinda and uh, Nagasena. And uh, I read some excerpts from it, and they had mentioned this translation. Yeah, a couple books. I had like a list of books that I wanted to get for a couple months, so I've got a bunch coming in. I wrote for like four and a half hours today, and let's see. You know, you write some and you don't write some, but I thought I went further into a new idea, a new approach. So anyway, tonight, um, make some soup or something, and then that's all I got for now. I can spin this thing around. Getting hurt. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Dominate and surprise. Surprise. I'm here to surprise and dominate. Dominate. Botox. Full body Botox. Full body lip injections. Literature. Literature. A spotted salamander in the bathroom. So last night I was like asleep, just about to go to sleep. And then I had some ideas in the language of the book and like perfectly like designed scene and I think when it comes that specifically just gotta like the only way I wouldn't wake up and get something to start writing all that down would be like if I had been like manically writing idea after idea I think there's a garbage truck behind me it took me like an hour I just I grab my computer and wrote for an hour. It's bringing the story or the thing that I'm working on into a certain direction, which, if that's the way it goes, I think I can make it pretty cool. But I also don't want it to like, I don't want to force it to go there too soon or right away. Um, so we'll see. I think today my idea, my plan is to explore I feel like the, it's so sad, like when you start a story or a book, like 
the options immediately narrow as soon as you begin and things get moving along and then they narrow so much to the point that you can like be very surprised when something changes but I guess what I'm trying to say is like I don't I want to explore not yet narrowing the options of what the story is gonna be so yeah it's all it's like I guess today as I'm talking to myself the goal or the idea is to like think about what how narrow this thing gets in scope and also it's like you don't want to narrow it so much that it's not fun anymore to ride into why this idea has come is because it like primarily started in just enjoyment pure enjoyment All right, four hours later, my friend is making borscht tonight. So that's going to be exciting and fun. Fitting the day, the day after I finish the stunning man in the Holocene. What a photo. That's an author photo. Just gotta very briefly talk about Max Frisch, man in the Holocene. It really fucked me up last night. I finished it. I was like deeply surprised and just loved it. He sets off and just, just passed halfway in the book on a kind of surprising uh, act. It just seems impossible for like the quiet, deliberate European story to have such like a dramatic and real dangerous act in it. And the book is maybe 110 pages and this uh, takes place around the just past the halfway mark, lasts for about 20 pages, and I was like breathless. I mean, just totally stunned by it because the book set itself up to not allow anything like this to happen. Something like so loud and external and like a plotted sense to happen. And then when that part ends and things become familiar again, you take both an, an inner turn towards surprise that is almost like not surprising because you would have expected the quiet book to do something like that eventually. But then you also have another plotted sort of stunning thing happen. And the way that it's executed is almost like, is this happening? What is like you think it's happening and it's just fantastic. And then one of the last sequences, I'll just call it the Matterhorn sequence, which is a, a reflection of, of the main character's past is like, <laughs> it's amazing. It's fucking incredible. And I don't know how something that's just a memory feels so vivid and applicable to the story, which in other ways would have just been like an old man's reflection. And maybe that is why, because of all of the circumstances. Yeah, it fucked me up. Like, it fucked me up. in kind of the middle of the afternoon. So continuing to create and generate um, without much discrimination. Or, yeah, when I write, I do my best writing when I'm not trying to make it do something specific. If I'm like, oh, I need more like emotional resonance, if that is in my mind, to, to write something like that and then it just doesn't come out true it doesn't come out real it comes out like someone trying to get something to do something which can feel like um, a very slippery dance the moment I try to like force it in any certain way it just immediately is zapped of all the qualities that I appreciate and enjoyed thus far to get it there so I think this method where I'm just discovering, digging deeper, and allowing whatever idea that come, like immersing myself in the space of the book and allowing whatever idea comes 
to just pursue that and pursue that. And then I think all, all of this is to say, like, I really trust my editing and, like, composition and compiling of works in ways that illuminate story. So, um, my ears are out so I can hear. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right, finished up today, did about mm, four hours. Yeah, going way further into all those different possibilities. And also, I think uh, there's much further to go. Like I can, I could have that same intention going into, you know, the next 10 days of work and probably be on the right on a track that like feels intuitively correct but yeah another good day i got like four more books completed or almost completed the order that i placed online i started i was caught i was in between reading children of the dead alfred jelinek she won the nobel prize in 2004 and this is like her magnum opus oh there's ophi the language in this one is extraordinary, but with speculations about Jacob, uh, there's all these like space breaks on the page and very interesting white space. And there are like these, you, know, you can see, yeah, these M dashes, which is like a panel of different speakers commenting about Jacob. Anyway, so I'm excited about this book. I'm gonna read more of this this morning. And then, so I got The Children of the Dead, which I'm probably second most excited about. And then Vasu Bandu's Jewels from the Treasury. And then we, I got the Jacqueline Hartman, French writer, I believe. And this was written in 96, 94, 95. And this is what we're going to read for the Read One Go live stream. And the idea is that if you want to join in and participate, get a copy, um, and probably April 1st, I think that's a Monday, pop it open and just read from start to finish in one sitting, and then perhaps if y'all want to stick around and chat about it, we can do that. Yeah, those are the books that I got from the order. Uh, oh, Billy. It's cool writing when stuff happens that you, that surprises you and shakes up the form or pushes it into a new space. And that happened today in a really cool way. A character kind of took the narration for a little bit in the book, um, which was really cool. I think it was uh, inspired by that. Speculations about Jacob. There's a section where Jacob is being like interviewed and I realized that like there's kind of, and it's not an interview, but there's kind of an opportunity in what I was writing to like have a character speak in first person and it was really cool to hear a character speak and like I feel like uh, get an idea deepen the story the intrigue of the story and like th that character is is really <laughs> he's kind of a funny 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 guy but anyway yeah I had a good good writing day four good days this week I think I worked probably like 20 total hours of actual writing on the book like doesn't count pr you know prep and reading and all this other stuff but 20 writing actual writing hours that's not too bad that's pretty good